Generally speaking, the longer players spend in the NBA, the better they get and more comfortable they become with the NBA game. They get the opportunity to train with the best basketball coaches and use the most advanced facilities in the world to improve their craft. Most of the time they do just that. Improvements can be seen in players better shooting splits, increased stat lines or simply getting more minutes. The NBA's most improved player awards serves to reward the individuals who've made these types of jumps. In this video, however, we take a retrospective look at the players who went the opposite way. These players came into the league guns blazing, but have since failed to live up to the early promise and have unexpectedly declined. What's going on guys, it's your boy Danko from the Bench Mob, and in today's video we'll be discussing NBA players who peaked in their rookie year, then fell off. The first player on the list, and the most recent example, is Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr. coming out of NC State legitimately looked like one of the most exciting players in his draft class. As a rookie, DSJ was a fun to watch, hyper-athletic point guard with a lot of potential upside. He built momentum all throughout his first year, averaging 15.2 points, 3.8 rebounds and 5.2 assists on his way to eventually receiving all rookie second team honors. DSJ became one of the Dallas Mavericks most valuable assets despite taking a back seat to Luka Doncic in his sophomore year. Smith Jr. would be Dallas's biggest piece in the blockbuster Kristaps Porzingis trade which sent him to the New York Knicks. The organization had hoped for him to be their point guard of the future. In New York however, everything seemed to go wrong as he did not progress as expected. His mediocre outside shooting became worse and he continued to be an unwilling defender. DSJ's minutes slipped down from almost 30 minutes a game all the way to around 15 minutes a game and eventually his game time went as low as 9 minutes a contest before eventually getting traded to the Detroit Pistons for Derrick Rose. While with the Knicks, Smith Jr. only averaged 8.7 points on poor shooting splits. Smith Jr. only played 20 games with the Pistons and has since bounced around playing for the Portland Trail Blazers and most recently this season with his hometown Charlotte Hornets. Pretty disappointing so far, but the North Carolina native may still have a chance to turn his career around. Next up we have Michael Carter-Williams. There's a long long line of players who are tipped to be the next Magic Johnson. Unusually tall, fast and athletic playmakers tend to get this distinction. It's happened to guys like Sean Livingston, LeBron James and Ben Simmons. The 2013 drafts version of this unique breed of player was Michael Carter-Williams. Michael Carter-Williams' draft class looks good today after early talks of it being a weak class, with guys like CJ McCollum, Victor Oladipo, Rudy Gobert solidifying themselves as quality NBA players, and Giannis Antetokounmpo turning into one of the league's best players. Carter-Williams, in contrast, stood out pretty early on. In his first game, he recorded a stat line of 22 points, 7 rebounds, 12 assists, and a jaw-dropping 9 steals the most steals in one game by a rookie in NBA history. He would win a total of three Rookie of the Month awards, the most in Philadelphia 76ers history, on his way to winning the 2014 NBA Rookie of the Year award. There was no reason to believe that those stats would be as good as it gets for Michael Carter-Williams, but that's exactly what happened. But the lack of jump shot, inconsistency, and several injuries resulted in his career taking a downward trajectory. He bounced around from Milwaukee, Chicago, Charlotte and Houston before he arrived in Orlando where he has been since 2018. In 395 career games, he would only average 10.2 points, 4.3 rebounds and 4.3 assists to go along with 1.3 steals on 40% shooting from the field. Next up on the list we have Jalil Okafor. It's quite easy to see where things went wrong for Jalil Okafor, but more on that later. The Nigerian American was one of the most dominant players in his high school class, and after he played an amazing freshman year with Duke University, he would go on to be selected third overall in the 2015 NBA Draft. He put up 17.5 points a game in his rookie year, more than the likes of Kristaps Porzingis, Devin Booker, and Nikola Jokic, and second only to Carl Anthony Towns. Towns has gone on to be a two-time All-Star and one of the best shooting big men in history. Okafor's career, meanwhile, has gone downhill from his rookie year. Okafor is a back-to-the-basket player who thrives in the post, while Towns is a much more versatile offensive player, able to score on all three levels. The reality is that the league has simply evolved past centers like Okafor, who cannot operate more than three feet away from the basket. 
He spent three seasons in Philadelphia averaging 14.6 points, 5.9 boards, and 1.2 assists to go along with 1.1 blocks per game. But he would then bounce around to Brooklyn, New Orleans, and Detroit, and in 247 games would hold averages of 10.4 points, 4.7 rebounds, and nearly an assist a game. Next up on the list is OJ Mayo. How exactly did a talented guard forward end up being a basketball journeyman? OJ Mayo started out on fire in the NBA, averaging an impressive 18-3-3 in his rookie season. He came second only to the soon-to-be MVP Derrick Rose in Rookie of the Year voting, finishing higher than the likes of Russell Westbrook and Kevin Love. The 2008 third overall pick seemed to be destined for big things. However, a string of off-court issues proved to be his undoing. In his sophomore season, he was issued a 10-game suspension for violating the NBA's anti-drug policy. He was also involved in an altercation with then-teammate Tony Allen earlier in the season. OJ would eventually get banned from the league altogether due to another drug violation. It is worth noting that he was still averaging respectable stat lines and minutes at the time, although he was not nearly as good as his first year self. He would go on to play in Puerto Rico, Taiwan, China and Russia thereafter. As of now, he's playing for Zamalek in the Egyptian Basketball Super League. Sadly, no NBA team has taken a chance on the now 35-year-old veteran, despite being eligible to play in the NBA again in the 2018-2019 season. In 547 career games, he averaged 13.8 points, 3.1 rebounds, 2.9 assists, playing for the Grizzlies, Mavericks, and Bucks. And the last player, and the most iconic player to have peaked in their rookie season and have fallen off, is none other than Tyreek Evans. In a rookie class featuring the likes of DeMar DeRozan, James Harden, and Steph Curry, it was Tyreek who stood out the earliest. His rookie year was said to be one of the best since LeBron James's. In fact, Evans is one of only five rookies to put up 25 and 5, the other four being Oscar Robertson, Michael Jordan, Luka Doncic, and James himself. So what's happened since? Tyreek Evans was a dominant force and a matchup nightmare as a 6'6 slasher at the point guard position. The one was clearly his best and most comfortable position. However, the Sacramento Kings saw it fit to move him to the wing to play shooting guard and small forward, which meant that he had less of a matchup advantage. He was also expected to be a better shooter on the wing, which didn't play to his strengths. He would average a lower 15.4 points on 44% shooting from the field and 30.2% from three for the next eight seasons, playing for both the Kings and the New Orleans Pelicans. His fortunes looked to change in the 2017-2018 season with the Memphis Grizzlies, however. He was finally able to play the point guard position again after an injury to Mike Conley. This coincided with Evans' best scoring season since his rookie year, with 19.4 points on 45.2% shooting from the field and almost 40% from three. Evans would then get traded to the Indiana Pacers to play back up to Darren Collison. However, he would ultimately get banned from the league until 2021 for violating the NBA's anti-drug policy. Tyreek averaged decent numbers all throughout his career, but his rookie year numbers look like that of an eventual all-time great. He is a testament to how bad man management and unfortunate circumstances can ruin a potential Hall of Fame career. In 594 career games, he averaged 15.7 points, 4.6 rebounds, and 4.8 assists on 44% from the field and 32.2% from three the one area of his game which may have held him back from being an all-time great in this league. Evans is currently plying his trade with Indios de Mayagüez of the Puerto Rico Basketball League. He has not played in the NBA since 2018-2019 where he suited up for the Indiana Pacers prior to his ban. So there you have it guys, that's the list of players who peaked during their rookie seasons and then fell off. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the Benchmob and help grow our community. Feel free to comment your thoughts on the list and who you would have added into the mix. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see on the channel, let us know. But for now, that's all we have time for. From your boy Danko, it's been a pleasure, and I'll see you in the next video.